Hello, welcome to another mind blowing episode of Clockwise by Netizen. My name is Providence SN. Do not forget, Clockwise is a podcast sponsored by Netizen, the biggest ICT hub in Aquaibum States. This podcast focuses on the tech world, the opportunities in the tech world, the challenges, the various high in demand skills that can give you tech advantage to earn in dollar and to spend in naira. And today we are bringing a right exciting episode. We'll be discussing with an industry with an industry proven web developer, as usual, the one with evidence and with results. But you're going to meet him after this short break. Thank you. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. As I said earlier, on this program, we ensure that our in-house, our in-house guests are persons that have evidence and have results in the various areas of technology. Today, we have a web developer in the house. Please help me welcome Imebong Itim. Please welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Welcome to Clockwise. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go straight to the point. Okay. Uh, who is a web developer actually? Okay. Um, a web developer is um someone who builds websites for um businesses mm. and also for organizations, right? Um, and also helps them accomplish their goals mm. through um their demands based on what they want for that. Um, particular websites okay right? so a web developer also does um also codes all right writing of um you can also be called like a programmer also okay. so um, basically a web developer builds websites for for persons and organizations now there is there has been a misconception between a web developer okay. and a web designer okay. please can you differentiate the both of them who is a web developer and who is a web designer all right um this question has been asked by um, a lot of people yeah okay yeah. um so most times people uh, confuse a web designer for a web, web developer, developer. Okay. okay so um they are actually have distinct differences uh, and if you find out sometimes they um, they can actually link a web designer to a ui ux person so okay. Type of, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay okay so uh, let's put it this way a web designer all mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. also builds websites Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, but uh, it may not necessarily have to code anything, right? Okay. Yes, a web designer can um, build using like tools using WordPress, right? Okay. And uh, most times, the web designer uses tools um, like WordPress, Wix, and also all those kind of um, drag and drop tools. Can you also say like somebody that does UI UX can also be related to somebody that does web dev- web dev- designing? Help. Uh, um. Yes. Okay. But not entirely, all right? Because now mm. a UI/UX person can build the user interface and everything the way it will look like on maybe Figma and tools. So, like what that. does a web designer do? A web designer makes sure that that design is actually implemented and accessible on the internet. But um, a web designer are, deals on with um, where visuals like trying to see your contact, your first contact with the with the website. Yes, definitely. Is that not what the a UI/UX person? Is that not what the person does also? Um, like I said, there are uh, similarities. Okay. okay? Mm. So the UI UX person mm. actually does builds that inf- interface, right? Okay. Does the design process of everything. Okay. Um, mm. this particular page will look like this. This particular page will look like this. Okay. Right? Okay. But when it comes to um, um, uh, hosting it for for public use, mm. all right. Because now a web designer will now make sure that okay that design is now implemented by hosting um, um, using um, maybe like WordPress or all those content management tools, mm-hmm. uh, making sure there's a database mm-hmm. right, that will collect all those information when people start interacting with the website, maybe filling out forms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a UI UX designer will not really go deep into all of those things. Okay. Yes, okay. you might not start going into the database aspect. Okay. When people fill the forms, how will this be collected and stuff like that? Mm. Right. So the UI UX designer is most is mainly um doing a design, like doing a um 
just like you want to build a house now mm. right it's doing the sketch okay well okay this mm. is where the door is this uh, all of this okay now the web here. designer implements what the ui ux yes, has actually yeah, okay yeah, making uh, sure that um, it's a fully functional website having both the front end the mm. back end and stuff like that yeah okay before we go into the front end and the back end okay. issue now i would like to ask this very very important question now, what are the various areas of web development? Because the word web development, it can mean a word that is encompassing. Okay. Do you understand? What are the various areas of web development? Um, when it comes to web development... Um, mm. I know there is front end. Yeah, there is front end, there is uh, back end. And there is also full stack. Yeah. Okay. The full stack involves both the front end and the back end. Okay, now differentiate. What's the difference between a front end designer, mm. a back end designer, and a full stack designer? Okay, um, or, or developer rather. Developer, yeah, that's mm. what I wanted mm. to say. Yeah. So a front end developer, all right, um, this mainly with what you see physically when you visit the website. Okay. Uh, let's say you go to jumia.com and stuff like that. What you see, what you interact with, mm. all right, the uh, the images, the text. All of those so stuff those are done. That, yeah. they, are, they are the front end. Yes. So can we say that those things are done by a web designer? The design is done. Yeah, it's also yeah, it's done by a web designer. A web also. designer. Yes. Okay. Yes. A okay. web designer also does that too. Okay. Yeah. Web designer. Mm. The only thing is that a web designer won't um, start um, um, coding all of all those things. We mainly okay. uses um, um, easy tools like oh, I don't. I wouldn't really say the word easy, but um using drag and drop processes so you get okay a web designer uses yes, drag and drop. drop processes okay but now it's not something that you put on the on a on a um on a fixed definition because now a web designer can also act as a web developer all right okay yes when you start implementing codes and maybe doing them um, stuff like um editing okay mean that you can be a web designer without coding Yes, without coding. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so you can just do purely. That's why we have people who uh, call themselves no code developers. Oh, yes, oh. no code developers. Okay. So once they once you want a website, yeah. all right, mm. they'll just build that website. They're not really coding anything for you. Mm. All right, they'll just get uh, a template for that particular project you want. Let's say mm. you want an e-commerce website. Mm. All right, we get a template. Um, start building the old stuff for you. Mm. All right, you drag um, these elements, the images, and all of those stuffs. Mm, drag and, and drop. Yes, and then host your website for you. Then your website is for you. But a a, a web developer who knows, um, let's say the front end developer now, mm. who knows like um, HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript. Mm. All right, will uh, actually sit down, maybe code these things from scratch. All right, that's the front end developer mm. coding all those um, front end mm. this thing you see in there. Mm -hmm. Sit down, code them from scratch, mm. and um not really not really using the old process a web designer would do and stuff like that okay so that is it for a front-end developer what of a back-end developer then the the back-end developer is um someone who is in control of uh, what users who visit the website don't really see all right so now there's what we call a database okay. when you visit jumia.com mm -hmm. you visit all of these websites mm -hmm. website you don't see the database that um, all your information are stored mm -hmm. and so if you um, if you fill in a form or a register um, on the site mm -hmm. all of those information are stored in a database right and the 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 backend developer um, sets up that environment right? okay that makes it possible for um, the front end to be able to interact with the back end. Okay. Because if there's no back end, your website won't be functioning. Okay. Your website will not be hosted mm. on the on the on the um on an hosting platform where mm. it will be accessible by mm. visitors. Mm. So the back end um, person makes sure that there's an interaction between okay, once um um somebody um does anything on the website he stores all of those information mm -hmm. he can interact with the front end and all of those things so mm -hmm. it builds the environment for storage of um, information and interaction mm -hmm. okay yes so now a full stack developer is somebody that can that can actually operate in the two areas yes both the front end yeah, and so we can actually conclude by saying that a, a front end deals with visuals 
Yes, yeah, visual. Then yes. the back end deals with the savers. The yeah, yeah, the server story. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we know. have in the back end we have things like um, my SQL. I don't know uh, if I'm going to technical. My SQL. You have um, MongoDB. So, so all of those are still. So which, one uses, which one uses HTM, HTML, yes, CSS, and uh, yeah, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, are front end okay, languages. Okay, front end. Okay. Uh, but sometimes um, there are also some JavaScript um, tools or packages mm. um, that also interact with the backend. Because mm. now JavaScript also not only for front end also works with also backend. Okay, so you can use the JavaScript to actually develop the front end yes, and, and, and back the back end. end. So, okay, yes. okay, okay. That's that's good. Uh, also, I want to ask: um, How is the job market for a web developer in Nigeria, especially in Nigeria? Well, it, let's leave the okay. idea of everybody trying to go to go to Fiverr, Upwork. Do you understand? How is the job market like? How is the job market in Nigeria? Uh, okay, for for a web developer, mm. the thing is that the market is there. Right, we're looking at um, in today's economy, mm. right? You might not really get what you are looking for in terms of the pay you are looking for because now. Mm. Um, people want a website for their for their business, but, I, but I not, they are not ready to pay as much as you are valued for for that particular work. Mm. And so, it's, it's still promising in the market. But um, you shouldn't aim for much like you are going for the foreign market, mm. right? But there are still jobs, all right. There are a lot of um, jobs for web developers mm. right here mm. in um, Nigeria. There are many companies looking for web developers to build their businesses for build their websites for them and stuff like that someone that just wants to start an e-commerce um, platform mm. he needs a web developer to build that platform from the person mm. someone that wants to start uh, maybe a restaurant business and wants to start um, delivering foods for people to order online and stuff like that he needs a web developer. so there are many especially now where um, technology is on the rise mm. in africa and mm. in nigeria mm. as a well. whole there are many people come to the awareness that they actually need need the um, websites Okay. for their business so it's really really promising so okay. as you said let's not look at the foreign side because mm. if you want to look at that we know yeah there's yeah, a lot yes, of yes, opportunities, yes, opportunities yes, but right. yeah also we also have um opportunities for web developers in nigeria yeah okay. to be successful. I, I know you're a web developer yeah how is your typical day like when you wake up in the morning what do you do okay. as a web developer okay how's your day like <laughs> Let's assume that you're working remotely, for instance. Now. Okay. How is your day like? Well, um, for me, I wouldn't want to say for other web developers mm. that day. Um, once I wake up in the morning, my mindset is all about maybe the project I've done for people. Mm. Right? I'm trying to see that, okay, this thing still working fine and stuff like that. Make sure okay, you don't just build website. You also ensure that you monitor the yes, performance of this website. Yes, okay, 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 okay. Because you don't want a situation where you are doing all that and your client says that maybe the the there's a downtime on the website is not being accessible. Mm. And you want to make sure that okay, everything is in place. Mm. All right. And sometimes if if you don't really schedule your day and you are going with the flow, mm. web development is something that you can actually sit there for long hours. Is it a boring profession? It depends on the individual. For I think for for developers, mm. to me most developers don't see it as boring. It's mostly people outside that see it as boring. Okay, you enjoy what yes, you do. Yes, we actually enjoy what we are doing, right? Because it is something that engages the mind. It's a creative kind of skill, mm. right? So you can be in that um, flow state where you are developing stuff and you're actually enjoying what you are doing, mm. right? So for that, it might look boring, the old code and mm, stuff like that. People yeah. have issues with. The problem you have with, with tech is about the coding. Mm. Sitting down from morning to night to just could write languages that are not English language. Mm. Do you understand? So we tend to look at people, okay, how do people enjoy these things? Uh, the enjoyment is and also uh, the enjoyment is derived from you being accomplished, uh, being able to accomplish your 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 targets or your tag. So web development is more fun when you are doing something and you are seeing the results. Can anybody learn web development? But yes. Does it take passion? Any, like, can anybody can. Anybody, anything can be learned, right? But mm. you know, um, it's all about your your drive and passion towards it. Right? 
But there are still some people that will say, ah, code, code did not be my thing. Because mm. there are some people that have attempted coding and say, oh, more, this thing wants to scatter my brain. So, mm. You, you know me, I did data analysis. Mm, okay. I had the opportunity to do web development. Do you okay. understand? I did data analysis to the point I learned um, Excel, mm. SQL, Power BI, W. I was going very well. Mm. So when I got to Python, mm. do you understand? Now, the Python of the thing it, became it, so it, strange. It, like, not the normal you analyze with Excel, Power mm. BI, you do visualization, Tableau, and the rest of it. But it now became it became very, very strange okay. at the point of um Python. Mm. So I now realized. So those people that are actually doing this coding like full time, how mm. do they feel? Um uh, that that's just um it. so for to some people, like you said, mm. it might look boring and mm. what what's what like what am I doing and stuff like that. But some people they actually enjoy enjoy doing what they are doing because mm. To me, it's from my own experience, it's something that is just for for most people when when they are start, especially for beginners, mm. right? When you say, "Oh, I want to start going into coding," mm. and you start trying to do something, especially for small projects mm. like that, mm. and you start seeing bugs, it can be discouraging. But if you don't give up and you try to like, okay, reach out to people for help and assistance on certain things, you actually do. So the the discouragements come most times when people are starting when you, out. When you encounter challenges. Yes, so when you when, when you're starting out to code, yeah. then there's this same um, bug. Uh, you're feeling like, okay. oh, I can't, I can't um, continue uh, like that. Okay, okay. But if you are passionate enough, you can take a break. Mm. All right, mm. you come back to it again and fix that problem. Mm. So the joyful thing about development is that once you see that um, success, once you're able to be the joy they will um, overshadow maybe everything that you, discouragements you felt in the past. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'd like to know your personal story. Okay. Of how you became a web developer now. Do you understand? Okay. If you transition from a particular field mm-hmm. to web development or you just started by web development, but it's, that will be after this break. Okay. After this break. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Welcome to this mind-blowing episode of Clockwise, sponsored by Netizen. Um, I still have a web developer, a proven web developer, the one with one with um, evidence and with results, um, Mr. Imebong Etem. Now, how did you transition to web development? Because I know there is no school in Nigeria that actually teach web development. And the normal computer science in our schools, I don't think they actually have this, they give you this in-depth experience mm-hmm. that can make you successful in this profession. Did you study computer science? Yeah, uh, actually computer engineering. That's what you studied? Yes. Did it, you were taught web development in school? Um, not really so in depth. How, how did you try? Because our last guest was also an electrical electronic engineer. He transitioned to cybersecurity. <laughs> so how do you actually transition from this particular profession you were taught for years? Yeah. Did you start web development after your school or during your school? Okay. Um... I actually started uh, web development when I was still in school. Okay. Uh, so there was a particular project I had in mind. Mm. Okay. I actually started with web design, actually. Okay. Started with web design. I uh, built a fully functional website. Mm. Uh, but can somebody be profitable with just web design? Like Yes, you can. You're, you're just a web designer. Yes, you can. And there is an opportunity for you. Yes. In definitely. the job market. Just like we have people who are... Um, um, no code developers, right? It's just for you to be able to, um, that thing that you know, you do it well, whatsoever niche you are picking, right? Not be able to do it well because if someone is hiring you and a person knows that, oh, this guy doesn't code, mm-hmm. but this is what he's really good at, mm-hmm. right? If there's any issue that involves maybe coding or fixing of box or manually fixing anything like mm-hmm. that, the person can actually hire someone outside to particularly fix that issue. But the thing is that that thing that you say, okay, you can do, all right, as a web designer, just be good enough. And there are people when um good amount of salary from or web design from web design. Only. Yes, from web design only. Mm. Uh, WordPress developers they call the same with the uh, WordPress developers too. So from that alone, they they also make good good income. 
But if you want to um, further on, mm. I always recommend you should also learn the coding aspect too because you're impacting more value in yourself and your your value in the job market increases. So you tend to earn more. So do, do those that code as web developers earn more than designers? Yeah, according to the to the uh, I would say to the you mean web designers, not no, do web those that actually you said you, what you said is that those that are, that actually deal with um, the visuals, mm-hmm. the designers, the non code developers. Yeah. Do they those that code those that deal with the back end? Do they earn more yes, than from the non code yes, developers? They do, yeah, because if you are to weigh the the value in the job market, right? Mm. Even the ones that don't code, they rely on the ones that code that code itself. Because mm. for you to use that drag and drag and drop element you're mm. using, mm. it was someone that coded it. Okay. Yes. So now you're just picking. It's just like um, you want to build a a, a cupboard, mm. or a wardrobe. Mm. All right. Someone went to the to the forest to cut down trees. Okay. Those are the coders. Mm, all right. Mm. Now the carpenter is taking that wood mm. and building the 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 um and uh, giving you this uh, wardrobe. Yeah, but somebody right? has gone to the yes. forest to pick it. So now mm. the web designer is just taking that um um code which has already been done and just um arranging it or like uh, using drag and drop features mm. to uh, give you what you want. So, because mm. now, an e-commerce website can be built by a web developer and can also be used, built by a web designer. But they will take different approaches. All right. So, a web developer will sit down and pl- um, start coding that thing mm. manually and stuff like that. You talked about, sorry, you talked okay. about the challenges um, newbies usually encounter okay. in their process of actually attaining perfection. How did you overcome your challenges? Um, and what, what challenges did you encounter? Okay. When I started initially, um, I didn't go for, I didn't start with the hardest part of things. So I think for most people, I would just suggest you start simple too. But okay. even in that simple things, Sorry, it might still be hard for some for mm. some persons also. Mm. Mm. What I do mostly is whenever I encounter an issue like that, you don't skew yourself. There's always a solution to everything online these mm. days. All right. Mm. If you are trying to fix an issue mm. and you encounter that you can't uh, mm. actually handle that issue, mm. you go to Google, you Google about that stuff. Mm. All right. There are YouTube videos, they they stack overflow. Many developers know about stack overflow. Mm. Right? You see solutions to that issue there and you fix it. All right. So it, there's there's no there's no code um, issue there that can't be solved. If you can't do it yourself, reach out to a fellow developer all right, who is all more experienced than you in that field. Instead of beating yourself up, because to me, if you've spent like fifteen minutes on a particular issue and you can't fix it, I just suggest you you go to the internet, search for that stuff, and fix it, or just reach out to a more um, senior developer to help you fix it. Okay, um, from your experience over the years, is it possible to actually be a web developer? On a part-time basis, like let's say f- in a state like our state, for instance, now okay. can you be a civil servant and be a web developer? On a part-time, can you be a student and be a web developer? Definitely. Is it possible? Yeah, definitely sure. Like like I said before, I started building websites uh, while while in school. Okay. All right. So were you working? No, you were just doing like freelance. Can you work? Like, can you actually be employed by an organization with just your skill? And not you don't have any qualification. Let's say you learned this thing. Let's say you just learned it and without any paper qualification. Can you just be employed by any company? Yes, definitely. I I actually got a a job, like like with a company. Right? Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, I was still in school. Right. So they were paying me. They didn't ask for whether I was done with stuff. Okay. And, uh, mm. What they needed uh, essentially was what I could deliver. Uh, some companies these days they don't ask for your maybe your they're looking at they're what not looking you for your, yeah mm-hmm. they're looking at what you can offer what you can do by the time they look at your portfolio oh this guy has done this one this one has, this guy has done this one he's very good let's, okay. let's put him in how long did it take you to learn this skill um, actually i've been to be fair how long will it take an average person to learn web development it depends on your learning ability 
but it ranges between um, if, if you want to say front end mm. or back end, mm. you can take between three to six months or more to attain perfection. No, not perfection. To actually learn the basics. Yes, yes, three to six months. Okay. But within that three to six months, you should be able to do projects and that can land you jobs. Uh, but in the in the area of web development, um, there there's changes in technology. Oh, you have so to you can, keep yes. yourself abreast. Yes, you have to keep on working, and um, the more projects you do, you mm. find out that you become better. Uh, so you can't say um, this is where you attain perfection, uh, but there are levels to it. That's why we have a junior developer, we have a senior developer. Mm. So the junior developer is just starting out, or I know it's a little basics of uh, maybe for front end development, a junior front end developer knows the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, okay. maybe a little bit of React. Mm. And then the senior developer is more experienced about that field, all right? so he can actually guide the junior developer. All right, okay, this is what you should do here, this is what you should do here. Mm. And in terms of practicing like that, all right, you become from junior, you move to a senior developer. Mm. So it's a good, it's a thing of practice. But yeah. Of all these languages that you've mentioned, because you've talked about HTML, you've talked about CSS, you've talked about Java, do you understand? Now, of all these languages you've mentioned, which is the most simplest to learn? HTML. Okay, from HTML to yes, CSS. CSS. Then Java. Yeah, some people run away from JavaScript. Okay, can you be a front end developer with just HTML and CSS? It won't be complete. Yes, it won't be complete because you need JavaScript to add some kind of functionalities. Right? So HTML is just like a, a document language. Uh, some people don't actually call it, they just say it's a document. How many languages do you need to learn to actually be a front end developer? Um, you learn um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. Re- React. Yes, so those React four languages also. you can actually say. Yes. For what are for back end developers? For back end developers, you need. Um, you still have to learn JavaScript. Okay. And you learn um, PHP, which is a server side language. Also, mm, mm. you you also learn um, SQL. Mm. All right. So um, I think I'm not into no, um, into back end that much. I think those are the ones you need. JavaScript, um, PHP. Okay, you're doing front end. Yeah, I do, yeah, I do more front end. Yeah, so I just need a little bit of uh, how the back end is. So mm. for the back end, I know you need um, JavaScript. Mm. You also need to know PHP. There are other uh, back end languages apart from PHP mm. and stuff like that. Mm. So, so those are the ones you need to. to, to do you learn. work remotely? Yeah, I work remotely. And you, you don't have anywhere you go to work, like you, you, your jobs are just remotely. Yeah, they are mainly remote work. Uh, I've never had any work where I have to, or even hybrid. I've never done any hybrid kind of job. You just, that is both on site and remote. You just wake up in the morning and you start pressing your system. <laughs> yeah, more like that. So, well, actually, when you're working, when you're not a freelancer, mm. if you're employed by an organization, um, there's always something they call stand up. Mm. It's always um, like a meeting, mm. right? Mm. Maybe it's around 10 a.m. Uh, you, you have a meeting, they will be briefing on what has been done so far, maybe in the past days, and moving forward. Mm. So it's not like um, you are totally free, right? Uh, you're not a freelancer, now you're working in an organization. Mm. It's a time for meetings and stuff like that. So from that meeting time, you'll be working on projects and you'll be communicating with your team members okay and maybe via slack and stuff like that so you're working from that time to maybe um and also there's a particular time where it feels like um this is where it ends for the day unless you want to continue so maybe the, there's an issue that comes up except it's an emergency mm. all right then you can now um uh, follow but there's always a beginning time and maybe an um, anytime, even though you're working remotely. remotely. Mm. Yes. Okay. Now, the idea is about remote jobs, majorly, especially now. The crave for remote jobs. Everybody wants to learn these skills so they can work from home, they can stay in the house and press their laptop and earn in dollars and spend in Naira. What are the challenges in being a web developer? Mm. Challenges. Uh... So me, what I are the challenges you encounter? Like, okay. Uh, for a web developer, challenges you encounter. Mm. To me, I don't really see them as challenges. Okay, one thing, okay. There's this challenge. Mm. Discipline. You need okay. to be very, very disciplined. 
mm. because now you're working from home. You need an environment that will encourage you to work. Mm. Okay, now there's so much time, available time where you can work uh, at your own pace, right? But that too much time can also be a disadvantage to mm. you if you're not disciplined. Yes. You can now have um, projects that are lingering, mm. all right? And which is very bad. So the, the main challenge there is you've been uh, able to discipline yourself enough. For me, that is, that's, uh, that, is, that is the main challenge for me. But apart from that, uh, I don't think there's... Uh, and also another challenge that could also come up if it's you're somebody that likes being in physical um, presence with people while working. Because mm. most times you might be in solitude working, except from maybe the ones you'll be chatting with your mm. team members online. And some people will, f- will prefer physical, this thing where they can interact with their team members. Mm. Right? So if you're not the kind of person who can work in isolation, only this isolation because you're working in a team, but you're still online. You just if you're not the kind of person that can stay alone and work uh while without having physical contact and stuff like that. Now before we go, I'd like you to actually speak to those that are aspiring to become web developers. Those that want to become web developers. Can you just talk to them like in one minute? Okay. What will you tell them? If you were in the house or inside the room where we have those that want to become web developers and they are looking up to you. Yeah. What will you tell them? Okay. Um, well, one thing I would say is um, you shouldn't give up, mm-hmm. right? The In web development, like it pays a lot. It pays a lot if you don't give up. And keep practicing. The only mm-hmm. way you can come up to speed in web development is to keep practicing and, and keep beating on your craft. Right? Because... Um, web development is something that takes consistency also. Right? So whenever you practice and you come into um, um, issues like that, or maybe you have issues with your code, mm. reach out to people for support. Join a community. All right? Learning involves being um, amongst people who are doing better than you, so you can also learn. So basically, keep practicing and don't give up. Reach out to people and form a community to get better in web development and the best community you can join to learn is netizen definitely that's the biggest ict hub in aquarium states you not just learn you meet people you interact with people and um for very good news we'll be having our first tech advantage coming up from the 14th of december you can actually walk in to enroll am i right yeah definitely you need a community like netizen to actually build your career on that note we draw the curtains for today episode and i promise to bring you an exciting episode of this podcast on friday but before then do not forget that the literature of 21st century are not those who do not go to school or those who will not go to school but they are those who have decided not to evolve as their environment is evolving my name is providence essien see you on friday thank you